Audio Sound. This is Bjorn Jacobson speaking, and this is a video series about how to do AAA size projects in WISE. Hi, and welcome back to Kujo Sound and another session of AAA WISE projects. What we're trying to do in these videos is to create a AAA sized WISE project from scratch, simply to get an overview of what kind of thought process might go through when we were creating a project of this size. We have previously made, I think five videos now, before this one. So if you're new to these series, you should go back and watch those because we go over a lot of basic stuff and a lot of really important things. And today we're going to check out some of the ambient stuff that we can get into our project. In the previous video, we made some footsteps where we were simply checking player cloth, player footsteps, um, and a lot of these color coding and why it's important and so on. We have all these dirt and forest. And I should probably get all of my assets into all of these, but we get to that once we start to check out the project. What we're going to do is that we, with this ambient system, are probably going to have an ambient system where sounds will flow and we can play the footsteps on top and we can test it before we even have a project. That is one of the prime goals of all these videos. We want to create a wise project that can simply play the full game without having a game to add it to. Maybe because we are one step ahead of production or we're asked to make a project where there simply isn't a game to hook it up to yet. What I want for this project is to create a one event ambient system. So simply by the start of the game, it just says play ambience. And then that ambient system will live and feed on RTPC values, lots of variables, switches, and so on that will come in from the game. Like what time of day is it? How wet is the ground? We already have that for our footsteps. Um, how many birds are there? Uh, what type of biome are we in? And so on. And what we should do is that we should probably get some understanding of one of the really, really greatest powers of WISE is, are we going to use blend containers or switch containers with random containers and so on? And I want to use switch containers, but have in mind that there is nothing holding you back in regards to making your own switch system in your engine. Let's say you're using Unity or Unreal, and then you can make some sort of tool where instead of having one event that triggers footsteps, you could have one that is called uh, play footstep grass, play footstep forest, dirt, etc., etc. You can have all these events. There's nothing holding you back doing so. If you do your switching over there so that you can have a random container over in Wise that triggers on each and every one of those events. But we want to stick to one event for ambience that simply plays play ambience. Let's go ahead and make that. So we're going to create a work unit that we will be calling ambience. In ambience, we will just make one event that is called play ambience. We should probably keep it to a more detailed level. So play ambience, play ambience main, just to make sure that it does that. So over in our actor mixer, we're going to be creating a work unit here and we will just call it ambience. And in this ambience, we will start to add all of our mixers, various containers that we need, and so on. We already have a mixer here that is called Ambient Master and Ambient Beds. And let's go ahead and make an actor mixer here that we will be calling Ambience Main Mixer. And this one will go to Ambient Master, Ambient Beds, 2D Ambient Beds, because that's what we're going to have in there. Now, I have previously made a video about blend containers and switch containers and so on. And one of the real, real powers of WISE is that we can have these switch containers that can cross. A lot of questions I've gotten after that video is, why do we use switch containers instead of blends? Why don't we just trigger a new event and so on? And we could, let's say that we have uh, a forest biome sound ambient bed that is playing and we are now into the grassland one. We could have an event that says, play the grassland one, and then it would stop this one and play the grassland one. But that's not what we want. We want it to cross fade seamlessly so that we simply know what biome we're in because we are using this one event system. We could use states for that, but the problem with states is that the states will not cross fade the way it does. So over here under switches, let's make a work unit and call it ambience switches so that we have all those there. We know that we will need to know ambience biome type and what kind of biome can we be in? We can be in forest. We already have all those from materials, but let's take a look here. Forest, 
We can be in grassland. We can at least be in swamp, mountain, etc., etc., etc. Let's just stick to these four to begin with. So over in our mixer, we will be creating a switch container that we will be calling amp main biome switch. And under our group, we will set it to switch between our ambient switches like that. Let's just make sure that the default one is grass. That would be nice. We also need to know, because we need to know time of day and so on. Now we have this switch container. One of the real powers is that if, now if this one can cross fade automatically between forest, grassland, swamp, and mountain, it can also cross fade up between hundreds of other things, like what, how many birds are there and so on. That's one of the real powers about the switch container. The switch container isn't just a container that you set a switch on and then press play, like on the footsteps, you would do that. The power here is that you can switch between tons of different settings that you want to set up. So as we've done before, we have our ambient main biome switch here. And what we want to do is to create some sort of test work unit or test switching system for the time of day that we need for these various biomes. And then we can copy paste that into it. So let's go in here and say that we now have a switch that is called ambience time of day. Let's make it for test. And this one needs an ambient switch that is called amp time of day. And this one here should switch, use the game parameter because we already have a game parameter called time of day. Funny enough, right? And under ambient time of day, we can have night, first of all. As you can see, our time of day go from zero to 24. So that's over the cross of an entire day. So we should have a schedule that will probably look like that this is sounding like morning, this is sounding like midday, this here is the middle of the day, afternoon, dusk till dawn, etc., etc. So we have night that comes in from 12 to what? Two. And then we have dawn. And we will have early morning. Let's just call it that because then we can have as many as we want. Midday, afternoon, evening, dusk, and nightfall. Let's just do it like that. So we have our here, use game parameter, and it goes from night until, let's call it, what, 3.30? And here from 3.30 to what, early morning is at what, 6 a.m.? 6.30 a.m. Depending on what time you get up, obviously. goes. Now remember, <laughs> I've explained this before, this one down here should be where you want it to end, else you will have a switch that actually says that at 24 exactly, it should be set to none. Now we don't want that. So now we have a system that can switch between all these times of day. I'm not saying that we necessarily need all these times of day, but now we have them and can use them if we want. So over in our switch container for ambient time of day, Switch groups, ambience time of day. Default switch should be probably midday. And Alt Control Shift R to create random container. We will just have one that is called midday. We can have one that is called morning. Let's just make fewer than we need because then we can see the benefit of these. And we will have night. Good. So over here in our container, we can say midday plays midday and early morning. The curious thing is that notice this one here, continue to play across switches. That doesn't work right now because we haven't set this one to loop, which we will now do. We set it to be continuous and that means that it will play. All of these in here will also be looping. So. and continue to play across switches. Now let's add some assets. We import these and we want to make sure that we get these into an actual folder that we will be calling ambience import. Now we have all these files here. Forest and dawn, forest during the day, forest during the night. Let's just make a test folder with forest actually. 
So day goes into day, night goes into night, dawn goes into morning, and the warmth of day can also go into evening. Notice already now that if we press play and then change the time of day, we will literally have it switch between these. And that doesn't sound that good. So over, if we scroll right here under play across, we can simply say fade in time. Let's just make it 10 seconds because we know that our game will sort of Play like this. If we press play, now these are only the ambient beds. Imagine if you do this also with birds, with insects, with other sounds that also play, you can make them cross fade and you can even make a, let's say if we make a time of day base that is not biome dependent, but sort of like creates a layer where we mask these in between. You can create a system where ambient sounds can be playing without you noticing at all. You can even, if you go over in F6 and say that you want to see this live, you can see that right now it's playing the ambience time test that we have, ambient bit forest night. If we go back and change that value, you will see that it will be crossfitting and it will play both here, which is quite smart. Let's just say that we Take it down like that. So now, just by having one switch container and all that, and one RTPC that tells us what time of day it is, we can switch between all these. Just as a quick test, because this one here was forced, we'll copy and paste this into the biome and say here that this one here is the one that we will call forest. And under our main biome, we will copy this over and say that this is now forest. Copy this one over as well, and we will just call it grassland. Because I have some grassland assets right here. Let's get rid of these. Grassland. It's the one that we will call meadow, but we'll, we'll use it. Midday. Morning. So we have actually two, so we can say night. The one that's noisy is for night. And this one could be evening. So if we press play here on our grassland now, you can hear that it's changing between the different ones that we have. Here comes night. We go over to our live session here. You can see that it is switching between the two that we need. So what if we, in the middle of the night, are walking from grassland to forest? In our main ambience biome here, we should also set it to be continuously playing. Switch between these. And it should do so a 10 second switch like that. In our main biome, we will tell it that grassland, of course, plays under grassland. If we press play now, it will play grassland and it will be night. If we suddenly you can see it over here in our live session that it is playing, the one that we called meta for grassland. If we change this one to forest, we'll crossfade to forest. Of course, the grassland one is a little loud, so we should use a mix for that. We can also say that we want to go to middle of the day, and we're changing at the same time. If we can find a way, as I said before, to mask these transitions, we can have a very, very glorified system on how to create a very, very nice ambient system. And I've actually used this on a project, so it works, trust me. And that's what I would do by using these switches intelligently and simply have just one event and feed off RTPCs and other variables to control what time of day are we in, what biome are we listening to, and so on. That's it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching this Kujo Sound video on how to do AAA size projects in WISE. If you like this video, why not hit the thumbs up or maybe even subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel and all the time that I take off to create all this content, consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash where you for as little as $1 a month can help me sustain this channel. 
I would really, really appreciate it. Hopefully, I'll see you again in another video, or check out some of the other videos on the channel. It's a lot of game audio stuff. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next time.